to hiring an attorney, consumers are increasingly using more online resources during their decision-making process. In fact, last year in the United States, 58 million people were looking for an attorney, and 44 million people used online resources during their search process. So if you're in the legal industry and you're thinking about building a social media account to reach those 44 million people, um, there are a couple things to keep in mind in terms of your legal ethical guidelines. So when you're setting up your social media account, be sure to make a disclaimer on each of your platforms. And those disclaimers should address two points. The first is the obvious, that any of your comments or conversations do not constitute an attorney-client privilege. And secondly, you should also note your state of jurisdiction. Since the internet has no boundaries, you will be reaching people outside of your state. And secondly, even though you have those disclaimers set up, still avoid giving any specific advice with interactions on social media. Another thing to note is that you should not use the term specialist unless you are one. Unless you are specifically certified as a specialist in a particular area, just avoid using the term altogether. And next, another nuance to keep in mind is that every state has different guidelines for judge and lawyer interactions online. So in states like Ohio, there's a more lenient view where judges and lawyers can connect via social media. However, in states like California, Florida, Oklahoma, or Massachusetts, they have a more restrictive view. Any legal counsel that may appear before a judge, neither party can connect online. And finally, only your professional social media accounts are affected by these legal ethical guidelines. But ultimately, once you abide by these ethical guidelines, social media is a great way to build your practice. You can grow relationships on a more personal level with individuals that you wouldn't have been able to reach.